Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Goa Ahead. And obviously, the issue this week is about the virus and Goa's tourism industry and tourist season. The government is still dragging its feet on imposing very hard restrictions while cases are doubling every two or three days. What is the right approach at this point of time? There is a school of thought that says this virus is very mild. Uh, let the economy continue booming. Let us not get panicked till hospitalizations reach a tipping point. There is another thought which obviously says that prevention is much, much better. Uh, I have three eminent panelists me, with me on the panel. First, I have Dr. Shekhar Salkar, uh, who is a senior doctor and chairman of BJP's media cell. Dr. Salkar, welcome. Next, I am joined by one of the leading pulmonologists in the state of Goa, Dr. Anil Mahendrita. Anil, welcome. And last but definitely not the least, President of Travel and Tourism Association of Goa, Nilesh Shah. Uh, Nilesh, I will start with you. Uh, it's ah. a very tricky situation. Uh, you, have, you have been one of those voices uh, who are never bent overtly towards industry. At the same time, you have always sounded a word of caution. Now we are in the middle of it. And uh, so I think safely we can call this a Omicron week as far as Goa's tourism is concerned, looking at the crowds we are having. How are you looking at this from the industry point of view? Uh, see, we are very clear. Uh, in fact, I have been saying for last uh, almost uh, 8 to 10 months that COVID-19 is here to stay. So, we may have variant uh, as it is coming in and we have to, to learn to do business with COVID around. And uh, one thing is, if you see, as an industry, we have evolved and we have learned to do business with COVID around. And we are, of course, we are following best of protocols. 100% um, uh, of the uh, population, work, people working in the industry are vac uh, double vaccinated. People around uh, uh, industry, people who are staying in and around also have been vaccinated. Uh, the precautions which we are following, unless you are double vaccinated, you are not uh, allowed into Goa. Or with the, if you are not vaccinated, then the COVID uh, negative certificate. Mm. So with all these precautions, I think we are going ahead. And of course, doctors will uh, highlight more on the uh, Omicron. But what we see in media, I think it's more of a hyped uh, thing. And I think overall, the of course, cases will rise. But I think it will come down also drastically. And if you see South Africa, when it when started around 3rd or 4th December, it was so much of in the media. Today, we didn't, don't hear one word of uh, Omicron in uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And those world trend will definitely continue in Goa. Mm -hmm. And one thing is very important, livelihood is also very important. You have to understand that. With this industry opening up, the guides, your uh, uh, performer, musicians, people working in small restaurants, in the shacks, all have got some livelihood. And there's a lot of people who have been, so their patience is running out with the people who are working in the industry and who are employing in the industry. So for economy's sake, I think this is the right stand. And I think the economy has to move on. And I think we have learned to do uh, with the business with COVID around. And at certain, whatever protocols are there, which uh, government we are putting time to time, industry is ready to follow. And I think uh, that is the way forward. And as 31st December, uh, um, people want to come to Goa. Uh, and it's all pre-booked. It's not it's all last minute booking. And I think people, will go, Goa is welcoming the tourists. And it is a right uh, approach because uh, that is only way forward in this uh, pandemic times. Uh, Dr. Anil, how are you looking at it? Because you must be getting the patients already with uh, uh, the typical symptoms. Uh, what is the difference between the second wave symptoms and this wave? Uh, and do you agree with Nilesh when he says that it is more of a panic, more of a hype uh, than, than the actual problem on ground? Uh, actually, one should realize that we are not yet into third wave. Hmm. Third wave may be just starting. And uh, the Omicron cases are not even up to 1,000 as of now. We might exceed in over a period of time. Let me clarify something. Omicron spreads faster. It is less virulent. It's supposed to spread four times as compared to Delta. Less virulent, 50%. Hmm. Basically, what happens to Omicron vi uh, virus? It collects in the throat and doesn't invade the lung. As of now, this is the picture. But since it's transmitting four times faster, so four times more people will get affected as well as and we need to see from the previous wave that one percent of the viruses 
patient who get infected land up in the hospital one person consider that delta was 50000 1% of that which get admitted is 5000 mm. uh, uh, sorry uh, 5000 while here again 1% of omega will get admitted mm. omicron will get admitted but the transmission is four times so that means we are going to get double the admission what is going to happen now with the double the admissions the healthcare system which is already overburdened once you also remember that healthcare system is basically mentally and physically also fatigued hmm. after going through the first and second wave and when we get a big number of cases together that is the problem time when the real problem comes into picture what is happening in europe and usa it is not the omicron right now which is creating a havoc it is the omicron and delta together, together. both are prevalent and both are causing severe disease hmm. and in short period of time the number is multiplied in short period of time the healthcare system is already been overburdened with admissions icu admissions have just started taking place we don't have good genotyping system so we want to know whether it is the omega that is cause a problem or delta which is going to cause hmm. as so the symptoms are concerned symptoms are almost the same as of now there are uh, not many patients who are admitted as of now at least in goa most of them are got mild systems the mild symptoms because most of these patients which are there who have got infected right now are got double vaccination mm-hmm. maybe some kind of immunity has come up with double vaccination which has been done in goa mm-hmm. so patient usually have a milder disease they have a just light fever body ache small cough no breathing problem at all as of now so most probably that is uh, helping us now we'll be, again, we'll, we'll go go to the details of the symptoms doctor in a while because that's very interesting uh but i think dr salkar definitely has something to say about it because he is one person who has to balance medical science with politics dr salkar <laughs> uh, i agree with you that see one thing we have to understand that this is a milder variety and maybe this may be a change of from pandemic to endemic way also hmm. over a period of time such type of mutations will occur which will be less fatal less lethal compared to the delta and delta plus and uh, in goa at least we are almost 94% vaccinated and now we are starting with the booster dose also we are targeting for 15 to 18 uh, vaccination so all these things going on i think there is a means there is no need of curfew and all those type of things whatever government has put that 50% restrictions are there those who are vaccinated should be uh, you know in the um, can go to the restaurant and public places i think this is all is a quite a good way of you know controlling neither allowing the economy also to work at the same time taking a reasonable uh, uh, care for the um, citizens well one thing finally it is not up to the government government may say so many things but finally we have to look at ourselves also we have to be responsible we have to be taking care of our health also if i am not well i should be at home if i am not you know you know i don't need to enjoy every time unless it is absolutely necessary don't try to go to the you know functions which are in the ac which are in the closed door outdoor is i think i think is still acceptable because as uh, nilesh has rightly said almost one and a half year to two years people have been frustrated for staying at home they want to go out children want to go out but they have to understand that the number is rising one good thing is is yesterday's admissions were two only in spite of 170 positive and day before yesterday there was a nil admissions compared to 112 so the number of admissions are very much under control and we will keep a very close watch on this and suppose there is a increase in admissions then we know that there is something more to that other than just simple omicron so maybe we will have to tell now s gene also has come in a big way if icmr gives uh, permission for s gene uh, this as a one of the factor negative s gene means likely to be omicron then we will have more people to diagnose that this is omicron or it is something else hmm. and delta plus i think we are already get, got over it delta and delta plus in goa no, that's a very very almost our full population must be covered by now i'll, I'll go to uh, dr anil first then i'll go to nilesh so that's a very interesting point when government is looking at this data and the case is doubling every two days uh, dr anil do you think this is a fair assessment that we should uh, look more keenly at the hospitalization data rather than just doubling of the cases what's a fair approach here yes actually we should look at the hospitalization data see what, like what we are seeing 170 cases yesterday 
but how many of them got admitted only two hmm. rest of them right now are mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic or they come in contact with those people and i am been managing at least on phone eight of them hmm. which have come positive yesterday on teleconsultation so they have just got mild symptoms nothing till now so we need to change the whole thing look at the hospitalization rate what is there hmm. we need to see how many they get hospitalized how many of them are serious how many of them land up in icu on a ventilator as of now the symptoms of whatever patients which are coming are very very mild symptom just body ache and fever nothing else and again like uh, dr salka and dr uh, mr shah has said why are you waiting for the restrictions to come into picture from the government hmm. why don't we follow the covid appropriate behavior we should have a responsibility of our own why are we forgetting that we should not wear a mask and move don't move the uh, mask gatherings hmm. This is the basic thing which But I am tempted to ask you this. Now I am a simple common where I don't understand high-fi medical science. But if you are describing the symptoms that you are, and and moreover, if you are saying that this latest version of the virus, whom we call Omicron, gets settled in the throat and it gives you the typical sore throat, fever, body ache, headache, uh, do you think this is turning out to be just another flu season? With a change of is that how uh, we as common p- general public should perceive it, or we still uh, need to be very very serious about it? No, we need to be serious about it. It's only time will tell whether it's just a flu, and I hope it's just a flu. Because if it just is a flu, then I think so. We are getting an end of the pandemic. Hmm. We need to see the next couple of months are very crucial. How much we can cope with it? How many patients get hospitalized? And if it's just a flu, that's the end of this hmm. COVID pandemic. Uh, Nilesh, everybody is asking one question right now. May it be on social media or in our interpersonal interactions. Uh, the, the level and the magnitude of crowds that we are seeing at every tourist spot in Goa. They are not in uh, thousands. They are probably in lakhs. Uh, do you think this is a manageable situation? Because what doctors are saying very clearly, if it spreads four times faster. And if your hospitalization data is even one percent of that, our healthcare system will be overwhelmed. So when we are talking about restrictions, when we are talking about taking precautions, do you think, very frankly, the level of magnitude of crowds that we are seeing right now are by any way manageable? Uh, see, but frankly, you have to understand this crowd will disappear in next two to three days. So, so basically, now this is all pre-book. So you know, we can do little about it. And I think, as uh, doctors are repeatedly saying, it is up to us, each one of us, also, to see that we follow the COVID-appropriate behavior, because that is only way forward. Because if we are not going to follow, and even with the less of crowds, I think we are asking for trouble. But one good news, which doctors are giving it to me, what I analyze from what uh, doctors are saying, that of course data will come, and you know we'll be able to analyze better. But the way things are moving, I think we are you know, uh, quite positive about the things that you know things will not get worse. And if at all the case rises, as uh, we have in Goa, they have put up the health uh, uh, what to call authorities where private doctors are also part of it. Whatever the precautions or whatever the guidelines are being implemented, I think industry will be more than willing to abide by it because ultimately the health is paramount of the uh, public. Of the people working in the industry and the tourists as a person, hmm. so I think it is up to each one of us to follow the COVID appropriate behavior and the finding of the that one one small thing which you know it may be not uh, that easy with the type of crowd we may have uh, on the next two days, but people not wearing masks, the finding which we it's already mandated can be start uh, doing uh, that uh, finding part of it. So and. Awareness, continuous awareness that you are in pandemic and you need to wear a mask hmm. because that part is also required. Because being a tourist place, what happens? People intend to forget that you know they are coming on holiday, but you are in pandemic situation. So it's our duty also as an industry to keep reminding them as you are in pandemic, any place you have to wear a mask. And police, it has to be carrot and uh, stick policy. And the police also has to do their duty uh, of uh, start finding that people who are not following the COVID appropriate behavior. I think that is only way forward. Way it looks like. Uh, Dinesh, uh, I am tempted to ask you this because we have seen, uh, as far as European countries are concerned, and rest of the places in India also, there have been many cancellations. There have been many flight cancellations, hotel cancellations. Uh, are we seeing any uh, such kind of cancellations or people turning away from? Uh, holidays or the year end celebrations in goa or, or or we are we are not having any cancellations at all 
no see uh, see ultimately if they people uh, tourists find safe then only they are going to come to goa as of now we are in safe zone so there are cancellations in to tune of 5 to 7% hmm. but the equal number of people who are waiting to come to goa who are not getting the uh, tickets they or the flights again. or okay so it is compensated so overall i will say it is a uh, we are into a uh, uh, good situation at least for next three four days as if situation goes uh, uh, bad from here then we'll have a challenge and secondly the our neighboring uh, we may have a problem because the neighboring states have uh, neighboring states and other states have put uh, more uh, uh, what to call they have the more uh, yes on restriction which is i think uncalled for in fact uh, and uh, it, uh, it's up to of course it's up to the each one to take a call but i think one thing you have to understand that you know uh, people are we uh, have a mental issue if we keep to lock ourselves in uh, uh, and people want to move out and i think uh, the 31st uh, new with the new year coming and people want to get rid of the uh, last two years which has been very practically bad for all of us dr sagar so, do you agree oh, with nilesh that the restrictions uh, imposed by other states sound unreasonable right now or do, or do you feel that it's a precautionary measure which is better these precautions are always good from everybody's side but that means you have to balance between how much you know to allow and how much not to allow but whatever said and done you may have too many restrictions but actually is it being implemented also is a important factor is yes. it practically possible to do all those things which are being told it is not possible because nobody you know even health sector is totally fatigued you are asking them to increase the testing increase the testing how much you can increase the testing people are not ready to get tested there was a fight yesterday in azilo hospital when they told them that you need to do your antigen test before you enter the hospital you know they said no i don't want to do this i don't want to do this. nobody wants to put that stick in their nose so it's not easy to get these things done but see the number will rise there is definitely the numbers will rise because the infectivity is there but considering all the scenario what is south africa has gone through even other states have gone through in other nations have gone through one thing is sure that the deaths and the complications of the lung complication requirement of oxygen is very very much less compared to what is there and we are now very well well placed after seeing the second wave i think our hospitals and all everybody has got sufficient oxygen supply sufficient bed strength has been created is sufficient you know manpower is now there to take care of the people so considering that 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 admissions are at minimum as i know in the last expert committee meeting dr viraj told us that there are only 20 patients admitted in gmc and after them very few are there on you know something in icu none of them are in you know in a bad shape our death rates have gone down one or two maybe in one or three days see the some of the deaths will be there in a pandemic because in pandemic you have to understand that all those who are comorbid who have got late stage of cancer late stage of uh, chronic renal failure heavy diabetes and you know they suffer from this disease the all it will be labeled as a comicron disease or you know for that matter as a covid disease deaths so the number will be there one or two or one maybe in a month maybe around 20 20 people will die see this death will be there for a long time to come but you have to understand that fresh un uh, suspected people those who should not die die are not dying as of today most of them are dying who are already you know in the phase of very late stage of cancer or uh, other things so one important thing is that we will know we will know see on third in the next sunday this sunday will get which will be about 4 to 5 i'm quite sure it will be around 4 to 5 No, I think that's a very, very interesting point, Doctor Anil. Do you think the same question that I asked uh, Nilesh? Do you think that the magnitude of crowds that we are seeing on beaches or nightclubs or party venues anyway manageable right now? Doctor Sarkar rightly pointed out that uh, mm. you may put restrictions, whether whether they are practically implementable. Doctor yeah. Anil, uh, what, what do you what do you feel about it? Uh, my thing is simple. As long as uh, people follow COVID appropriate behavior, you wear a mask. The other person wears a mask. The transmission is just 0.5 percent. Hmm. If two people are wearing a mask, the whole general public, whether a thousand people or one lakh people in the uh, state coming as a tourist, as long as they wear a mask, nothing should go wrong. We should not impose restrictions. And why should we impose restrictions only in the night time? <laughs> why Omicron only spreads in the night? Yeah. During the day, it doesn't spread. <laughs> The different states have put restrictions between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. 
Why not during the daytime? We should put it even during daytime if it need be. Wear a mask, follow the COVID appropriate behavior. I think so we'll be able to get out of this situation very well. Hmm. Doc, we should not come out with so much of restrictions. Uh, before I go to Nilesh, do you feel that uh, we are we are one of the states with very high ratio of uh, vaccination and double vaccinations? Uh, do you think that's a that's a great advantage that we are having right now, uh, and we should be cautious enough not to flounder it? Double vaccination is definitely help, and we should also insist. The government should insist that people who have not taken the vaccination till now, there are many many people who are not taken a single dose should get themselves vaccinated. Hmm. This double vaccination is one which is going to really help us uh, prevent from getting a severe lung disease. Hmm. Uh, Nilesh, when you are looking at it, do you think that uh, as far as the industry is concerned, most of your staffers, uh, most of your managerial uh, positions, all of them are vaccinated and whether they are, because many tourists are also complaining that uh, the alarming situation that was there maybe three, four months back. It's not there right now. So as far as the precautionary measures are concerned, even from the industry side, there have been many who are not following the COVID appropriate behavior or protocols. Uh, uh, Pramod, we have to understand one thing <clears throat> that everybody has to take care of themselves as the doctors have been saying. Uh, industry has been insisting that people has to be vaccinated, double vaccinated, then only they will allow. And as far as the trainee is concerned, one or permanent staff, they have refused to even employ them or, you know, take when your new recruits are taken or temporary recruits are taken if you are not double vaccinated. So industry is uh, doing their bit by, you know, uh, forcing people that they have to be vaccinated because <clears throat> it, it, if something goes wrong, it not only affects the, the name of the, you know, the establishment, hmm. but even the guest gets affected, your family gets affected. So we are trying to educate maximum possible, and I think if if I if I can say it correctly, 99% of the people working in industry are vaccinated. Even the migrant workers, which were coming in, I mean, lots which came in in month of August, September, they also have uh, many of them have taken double vaccination in month of December, the second uh, dose. Mm. So I think relatively we are quite. Uh, confident that you know uh, the industry has done whatever they possible to keep uh, uh, what to call to deal with the present situation and of course if you go to any hotels the, the people who are uh, attending the guests people working in the kitchen or people serving the restaurant all are wearing masks mm -hmm. so you know they are because the, that is covid appropriate behavior is only way forward and i think uh, that will only allow us to there without any stoppages uh, the business to continue and goa remaining the safe destination yeah uh, dr sarkar final words uh, do you think the government needs to step in now as nilesh said to ensure that every citizen is doubly vaccinated and there needs to be more focus and thirst and probably some punitive measures if you are not double vaccinated uh, even after one and a half years to close to two years in the pandemic. Do you think government needs to uh, come cracking down heavily on these individuals? See, we are almost 94% double vaccinated. Some, yes, there are some, see, I have to understand, there is 6% who are left. Government has tried its best. Yeah, then the CM is, you know, time and again telling the, all the health officers, all the full government machinery is after that to see that this 6% get vaccinated. Hmm. But somehow these people are not coming. See, there are three, four types of people. One is they will never get vaccinated. Whatever you do, they are ready for you even punish me or you punish me, I am not going to take. That means they are totally anti. So you just leave them alone. The second problem is there are some problem who are, you know, like patients who are undergoing treatment. Or, you know, they are, their fighting power is they are on chemotherapy or they are on radiotherapy. They are on very bad, you mean, compromised people, which doctors also sometimes tell that, you know, you wait for some more time. Mm -hmm. So those patients are needed to be vaccinated as and when they will come back. Number one, the second vaccination has to be properly implemented. But 6%, if you ask me in terms of a medical terms, 6% is quite okay. That means we should consider ourselves 100%. 6% hmm. is what immunity has to develop for everyone. You are saying now. it's an absolute herd immunity right now. 
it's like a hundred minute. You know what else? You she will never reach hundred percent. Doctor, never reach Doctor Anil, final words. Do you think government needs to uh, introduce any punitive measures now so that everybody is doubly vaccinated? Yes. Or as Doctor Sarkar says, ninety-four percent good enough. Uh, let there be free will. This is good enough to achieve herd immunity. Enough, but uh, what we can do, the uh, like the education department and certain companies have started. If you're not getting double vaccinated, we are not going to compensate your medical expenses. Mm. You need to get your RT-PCR done every ten days and come to the workplace. Mm. So this is one good thing which can be implemented and can be done by the government at each and every workplace and institution. That see, even the six person who has not been vaccinated, there are very high chances they might get a severe lung disease, mm. or even during the asymptomatic stage, they might transmit the virus to many other people. Yeah, let's focus on this six percent. By making compulsory RT-PCR tests every week or ten days for them, I think very, 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 very valid solution. Sometimes process is the punishment. I think this is one case where the punishment and the process both both may be working in our favor. When usually we we always say that when process is the punishment, the system fails. But I think this is one case where that RT-PCR test every week and negative certificate every week might take Prabhu. us towards that hundred percent vaccination. Yeah, Doctor Sarkar, final words. I am completely out of time. <laughs> Yeah, see, it is important that now High Court also has upheld this type of not punitive. You, you said punitive. Yeah. Punitive, you cannot do. Yeah. But this type of restriction, these are important restrictions. Mm. They should be outcasted, actually. To my taste, <laughs> they should be outcasted. If you are not vaccinated, you will not attend my wedding. Yeah. You will not attend my any parties. Mm. They should people should come out from their side. When you come to my party, you better get your vaccine. I think I think very very valid thing, Nilesh, Doctor Sagar, Doctor Adil. Thanks a lot for joining me on this. I think we are in a very crucial week that is probably going to determine the course of our next year in terms of economy, in terms of health as well. So all three of you, thanks a lot for participating uh, on in uh, and be on this panel. So thanks a lot. I think this is a very very crucial thing. We are at a very very crucial point of time. Where we don't know whether more restrictions are good, whether less restriction uh, restrictions are bad, we have absolutely no idea. We just need to see the data, and a very important Time point: will tell. we need to say the hospitalisation rate vis-à-vis -vis the cases. I think that is going to tell us whether we need to be more cautious or we can be more optimistic. All of you, thanks a lot for participating on this panel. Keep watching. Go ahead.